as I very quickly compose myself there. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Welcome to episode 26 of Malta Magic. Um, it is good to be back in the DM's chair properly this week um, with a brand new episode for you. So I appreciate it. we've had a few weeks of disruption. And then last week we did our uh, episode 1 to 25 recap with a lot of tangents. Um, so if you've not seen that yet, go please check it out on YouTube or listen on the podcast um there's a lot of fun to be had there between danny and myself but we are back we are back with our lineup for now um and for the for foreseeable future i should say um with the next installment of the journey and sort of the next events to happen on the crystalline isle but before we get into all that let's run down our usual thank yous and shout outs um so a big 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 shout out and thank you to incarnate's albert rodeo and dungeon alchemist for all things virtual tabletop and mapping um a big thank you to hero forge for their tools in helping me to create sort of npc visuals um, and token visuals as well, those sorts of things. Uh, D&D Beyond for all things D&D, and then the DM's tools I use in the background there, which are soon 5e Magic Shop. Two Minutes Tools, Thieves Guild, World Anvil as well, um, and then our audio tools, which are Tabletop Audio and Battle Bards. Um, still partnered with Battle Bards, so please go and uh, check their version 2 website out where you can go and see their new subscription service. There's a lot to be had on there, so go knock yourselves out, have a lot of fun. Um, you can see the links to our social media channels at the bottom there. Yes, we're still using the Twitter logo for now. Um, we'll, we'll decide whether we want to use the new one. Um, there's, there's dissent amongst the ranks, is all I'm going to say on that one. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, so, yes, please join us on Twitter slash X, um, Instagram slash threads, um, Discord, <laughs> Twitch, everything. I'm just distracting myself at this point. <laughs> YouTube, TikTok, the whole lot, we're there. Um, as I promised a couple of weeks ago, we're going to try and up and really push our social media game as well. Just try and get more content on there um, for you all to consume. Um, so please follow us on all those platforms. There'll be different things on the different platforms because obviously they encourage different forms of content. Um, and of course, on YouTube, on Twitch and on the podcast, you can catch the episodes either live or past episodes um and yeah you can either watch them or listen to them so please come and join us on the youtube channel please listen to the podcast on your podcast platform of choice may only ask if you're listening to the podcast and welcome to everybody that's listening to the podcast as i do my second token mic hit of the night um please do leave a rating or review the listens for some reason the other weekend absolutely through the roof it was amazing to see um so i think one episode got 23 listens in the space of two days it was nuts um, so thank you to everyone who is listening to that. Um, and yes, please come and join us on the Discord server as well. Again, we are going to try and do more on the Discord server, uh, just more engagement on there. I've been dropping my homebrews in anyway on a weekly basis or as far as I can on a weekly basis. Um, there is more to come on that front as well. got asked about homebrew last week during the recap and I may or may not have spent some time over the last couple of weeks um, building out a a first for Malta Magic, which I'm not going to reveal just yet. I'm just going to leave that teaser in there just so you all wait for it. Um, and we will see what happens in the future. So I believe that's it for me. Um, only the last thing I do need to say, very, very bad of me, I'm going to slap my own wrist there, is the artwork, the character artwork that you'll see is thanks to the amazing stick. Um, it is beautiful. It is stunning. Um, if you ever want your own artwork doing them, please go give them a shout. I know that commissions were open. I don't know if they are still open. But yes, go find them on Twitter slash X um, and see if you can get your own artwork done. Um, we've got some wonderful artists uh, in part of the Malta Magic community here. So if you want to see any of our fan art, then go and check that out on the Discord server. Um, but I waffle on and I waffle enough. So I will shut up and we'll get on with the episode. My usual warnings, of course, and as always, do apply. There will be the uh, adult language. There will also be adult humour. You have been warned. Let's roll.
Hello. Hello. Hi all. Slightly different view for tonight, which is a little bit weird, but we'll we'll get used to I'm it. I'm still getting used to it. So, I'm in the middle. Ooh. Yeah, you are. It's smack going in the middle. You are a Matt or in a Matt and Danny sandwich. <laughs> what a spit roast that is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, mate. Never let me down. There it is. Never let me down. Thanks for making me uncomfortable. Excellent. That's great. Good. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to be sat there going. Oh, I've turned the wrong way. I've turned the wrong way. Do it every time. Every time. Every time. This is why I have my mic just positioned so I can see, okay, that's left. Turn that way. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, before up. we descend into even more chaos, <laughs> let's um, let's run down the lineup. Um, I am, of course, Matt, your Dungeon Master, and also the existential form of COG. Yeah. Hello. Oh, uh, yes, I haven't done this in a while. Uh, <laughs> hi, uh, I'm Dave, and I'm playing Jewel of Shadows, the uh, female tabaxi rogue, as my tabaxi lookalike comes in as well. Hi there. <clears throat> You're going to sit down, shut up. And I am Danny, and I play Lex Ordo, the UNT sorcerer, and in other news, I have just bought a new pair of dice, so I'm excited for them yes. to arrive for next week. Ooh, yes. yes, because Ooh. I think... I announced it last week anyway, but our giveaway that is coming up when we hit 100 followers um, will be that one of a kind. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Here it is. Uh, one of a kind dice tower that you can use. Um, so we'll hold it up in front of the camera so we can see it. There we go. So it folds out like that. And there you go. You can roll it down here. You'll see my background if I do that because the felt is green. Um, but yeah. Dice go down there. Should we do a little dice roll test down it? Yeah. Better be a natural time. Oh. What did it land on? A three. So I can't guarantee it's ah. a lucky dice tower, but... Yeah, <laughs> but that's... <laughs> that's... <laughs> it's apt for tonight. <laughs> um, so yes, complete with Molten Magic logo. Which you can see. I'll get it central screen in a minute. You <laughs> yeah. can tell I was never a product like brand advertiser. Really. And then... Uh, shit on QVC. On the back. Nice. I would be shit on QVC, mate. Oh, I so haven't got the legs for QVC. Did you did you ever go into one of those like um what was what was it the the Leicester Space Centre where you actually had to do the forecasting and you had to point in the right direction by looking at what was on the screen even though you had a green screen and it was friggin' impossible. Like it was weatherman. so we yeah. do that. Yeah, we did. And I I was I got so confused I got a headache. <laughs> well it's like inverted controls. Yeah. Those those absolute <laughs> Maniacs who do controls, I can't. I can't even fucking yeah. turn my head the right way. Oh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So yes, that's our lineup for tonight. Uh, of course, we made the announcement last week uh, and over the last couple of weeks that somehow we'll be taking an extended break from Molten Magic. Um, unfortunately, it is what it is, but we shall soldier on. However, we do have some good news in that we are lining up guest stars. And we do have some confirmed as well for later on. Well, I say later on in the year, sort of uh, about a month away. We're just finalising the details there, so look out for that. Which should awesomely, uh, awesomely, also hopefully, I just combined English words there just to try and shorten <laughs> things. Um, fuck my life. Do it in German. Um, so yeah, we should hopefully coincide with when we are going to celebrate three years of Malt and Magic as well, which is ridiculous. It has crept up very quickly i think we've had that much happen in the last year with um the last giveaway and then two year anniversary end of campaign one specials campaign two it's it's literally crept up on me didn't didn't realize it was happening uh, until earlier today actually i went oh shit that's three <laughs> years on stream so yeah we yep. will celebrate that with you um may even coincide with our giveaway if we can get 100 followers by then i will leave that to you viewers um so get no on it guys. No pressure. No We've pressure. lasted longer than cool. uh, uh, quite a lot of marriages. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, take that with what you will. That's a sad statistic, really. Indeed. It? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I, I'm not, not sure what the reason for that is. Maybe it's the communication. I don't know. It's the fact that we don't well. Or may, well, maybe. Our, our marriage or marriages in general. <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> This is a rabbit hole. This on screen here. <laughs> this on Maybe it's because you always put out, Danny. Well, that is true. I don't even need a first date. 
<laughs> have you got Doritos? Oh, I'm excellent. coming around. Game on. <laughs> oh, I have missed this. Very good. So, uh, last we left off, which was a little while ago now, I know we did our recap last week, um, the two of you had spent time in the library of the Azure Pillar on the Crystalline Isle, trying to find out more and more information about Artemisia, about mm. the planes, about Artemisia's research, and just trying to understand this world and this situation that you have been catapulted in over the last few weeks, realistically, if we think back to in-game time, um, which is nuts. Um, you, as, as per the last episode, you found a couple of books, or you were introduced to the librarian of the Azure Pillar, I should say, which was Lorendrax the All-Seeing, the, the Beholder librarian, which I think was a bit of a surprise to Mantle. begin with. Um, and were given two books to read which were the sort of the most recent of Artemisia's publications, one of which was a partnership between her and somebody with the initials VS, and the other one was her own writings, um, which sort of spoke about her experiences with planar investigation and this idea of the multiverse, as I try not to put up there, excuse me, um, just trying to understand what was going on. Again, I've not given you those snippets, so second wrist slap for me. Um, I will dump them into the law document for you. Um, where was I going? Yes, those law documents, uh, not the law documents, those snippets of information, fucking brain today, I swear. Um, those snippets of information had a very similar theme about the fact that she was close to something. She'd not quite found what she was looking for, but there was also this underlying dark thread to something there was a danger or there was a darkness she spoke of whispers um in the book with vs she said that vs may be coming accustomed to the whispers and didn't see the danger um and there was a lot in there and then i think one of the final things we did um was jewel stroking some words on a page and a a breath of arcane energy, as I described it last time, emanated throughout, and the the cloak that Jewel wears was transformed, um, a gift, so it would seem, from the Watcher, who has transformed the cloak into a new item, uh, one of a kind for Jewel, another homebrew, which I won't release while we're in the midst of the campaign, but I will provide um, maybe later on, or um, after the campaign, so look out for that. Um, but yes, a brand new item for Jewel to make use of to help in their endeavours. Um, I think that was the majority of it. You then returned to your room, having sort of discussed a little bit with uh, your ward, the, the warden of the Azure Pillar that was, was escorting you around, um, and eventually returned to your room, had a brief chat with Karsis, and then went to sleep for the night, um, with the understanding that... The Grand Master, um, Alaric, will probably want to speak to you at some point. Um, but also with that question of, what do we do next? So we begin tonight on episode 26 with both of you dreaming. Uh-oh. <laughs> so I asked for two rolls. Oh, that's what they were for. Two rolls. <laughs> right, okay. I'm ready for some trauma. So, <laughs> Danny, I'm going to come to you first then. Because I quickly just search for stuff and respond to things. There we go. So, let's bring up the right note. Danny, Lex, even. You are taken back a long time. 30 years ago, almost, in your dreams. It's a scorching day. And you see your, your village around you. You see 
your family, the inhabitants and the Yuan Ti community gathering. Gathering for an event that has not happened in almost a decade. In fact, almost exactly a decade. The grand pilgrimage to the ancient ruins that exist on the island in which your village is located. You feel eager. It's the first time you've been alive to experience this momentous event. You can feel the excitement in the air as, as families prepare for this journey, their faces adorned with anticipation and, uh, and reverence. As the sun begins to set, the procession begins its, its solemn march through some of the winding tunnels and out into the wider desert. You pass by an oasis that stands just outside of your village. A monument dedicated to the patron deity of the Yuan-Ti, Set, or Seth. A place of great importance and reverence, symbolizing the heritage, the legacy of the Yuan-Ti people. You continue for a number of days along with your family. That excitement still there, despite the heat, despite the journey. And there's a, a time where amidst the, the sea of reptilian scales, the vibrant colours, your inquisitive eyes catch a peculiar sight. As you rest for a moment, you see this shimmering diamond colored portal partially concealed by the shifting sands unlike anything you have seen before it seems to pulse with this otherworldly energy whispering promises of secrets of adventures you feel compelled by this irresistible curiosity you must investigate further. So you sneak away from your family. You sneak away from the main gathering. Approaching this enigmatic portal with a mix of both fear and fascination. You feel your heart pounding in your chest. As you reach out and touch that radiant surface. And in a moment, in a flash, the world around you blurs. And you instantly feel this sense of falling. The air feeling thin. And your surroundings transformed into this surreal landscape of gears, of cogs, endless clockwork mechanisms. And you find yourself on the plane of Mechanus plane of order, a plane of unyielding law. As you look around you, there is a sense of confusion and awe. As you behold these mechanical marvels, each one moving with this precise efficiency, you find yourself in a world unlike anything you have ever known, an alien realm, one that defies the chaos of your homeland. And again, you have that sense of fear, but also wonder. You want to understand the true nature of this strange place. And as you begin to explore, time seems to lose meaning. You catch a glimpse of strange mechanical creatures. Single eyes, double eyes, wings, these mechanical bodies. As a grand procession of them march throughout the plane. This procession itself leaving an indelible mark on your mind, stirring this longing for understanding, 
the mysteries of something, a word you don't yet understand, but a word that you hear, the multiverse. Abruptly, in a moment, you feel a tug on your consciousness. As quickly as you were there, you are back. But this time changed. Older. With new purpose. And a sense that you need to head southeast. That memory of the diamond coloured portal, the mechanical wonders, and the allure of that unknown remain etched in your mind. And while the dream is not totally accurate, for the first time in a long time you remember that day before, the day when it all happened, and you lost yourself to the plane of Mechanus. Oh, that's pretty heavy. Did, did, <laughs> did you, you said when I kind of went into the, the... I was in the dream as a kid, then I was still in the dream as an adult, but you said I had a sense to go southwest or southeast. 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 The there beginning is that of actual east or your in... version of east. Actual southeast. <clears throat> so you remember that as the beginning of your journey, having returned to the world of Ardalia. Yep. Okay. Oh, so that was the beginning of my, then my journey. Okay, not as in I wake up and I need to go to southeast the... tomorrow. No, 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 no. That I, was that really feeling am. in the dream of I'm back now and I have this purpose. That purpose that set you on your current path. Very good. Jewel, then, while well, Danny gets all that down. Me? I'm gonna write stuff. You. <laughs> you. As you drift into slumber, your dreamscape transports you back to your village, the village of Stonebark, shrouded in the inky darkness of night. The streets, once bustling with life, now lie deserted and hushed, with only the echo of your footsteps breaking the silence. Yet as you walk, the shadows around you seem to take on a life of their own, twisting, writhing like spectres of the past. You hear these familiar voices, hauntingly eerie, and that was perfect timing for that sound effect, by the way, mate, well done. Um, they drift through the air, whispers of long-lost friends, of loved ones. Your heart quickens as you recognise these voices from your childhood, reminding you of times gone by, of the joy that once filled these now desolate, deserted streets. But with each step, the shadows grow darker. Those voices turned into hushed murmurs that seem to echo your fears, your doubts. You see ahead of you a familiar building, your childhood home. Memories begin to flood back both warm and bittersweet. Those once familiar surroundings seem to shift and change, mirroring the, the turbulence of your emotions. You turn and you now see the centre of the village, the shrine, a place of devotion and worship glows with this eerie ethereal light 
revealing the the faces of the gods or at least the statues and the carvings of the gods as you'd seen them in this ever-changing dance their expressions switch from benevolent to ominous and this unsettles your soul the dream begins to deepen the shadows around you solidify into these monstrous forms these clawed hands that reach out to ensnare you and fear begins to grip your heart as you realize that these shadows embody the darker aspect of the village's history they represent the pain the suffering the secrets that have long been buried beneath the facade of normalcy you find yourself pursued chased through winding alleys chased by the relentless darkness that seems to consume you. Panic begins to take hold, but you refuse to give in to that shadow's grip, that grip on your mind. You see a light ahead of you and you feel familiarity, the light of companionship, the bonds of your, or with your allies. This flickers like a beacon of hope amidst the darkness guiding you through this nightmarish labyrinth and in this moment you <gasps> wake gasping for breath your heart pounding in your chest the dream lingering like a spectre leaving you with this lingering sense of foreboding was it a dream was this conjured from the, the mere depths of your subconscious? Or has it revealed something deeper? A reflection of the village's past, of secrets it may hold. You look outside and you see that dawn is, is approaching. You just can't shake that feeling that the shadows you encountered were more than just figments of your imagination I'll leave it there <clears throat> Jewel will um, go and get some some water, some fresh water and just like a, after a bad dream to try and almost drink it away, you know, that you feel like it may have also just been, I needed a lot more water before I went to bed. Okay. So Jewel leaves to go find water, or at least there is water available in the room. So Tate gets a large glass gulps it down this probably does disturb you enough Lex as you wake from your own dream um, and the both of you look around and you see that Carsis is not there <clears throat> um, have, have you seen Carsis? Uh, no I, uh, I only just woke up actually I, uh, I was going to ask you. I'm, 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 I'm struggling to come round, to be honest. I just had a very, very vivid dream. Uh, to be honest, this place, I am not surprised. I would have uh, thought that it would um, make for unusual dreams while we're here. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you think we should be concerned? Um, if I have a look around, is there anything that looks like there's been a struggle or like a casual, they just left? Make me uh, make me an investigation check, please. Okie dokie. I haven't quite come round yet. It's an eight. <laughs> Despite that, as you look around, you look to where the books are piled up the, the abjuration books that Carsis had been studying. Um, and you see there a, 
a piece of parchment that is rolled up. Um, this, this parchment looks... Um, uh, I'll pick it up. I'll pick it up and unroll it, see what it says. Okay, as you unroll it, you find a, a letter written in Cassus's hand. Uh, a letter which which reads, "My dear, dear friends," and I should do this in Carstairs' accent. My dear, dear friend, I can't do an Irish accent tonight. Tap them running into you, yeah, we dear <laughs> bastard, yeah. Uh, fuck it, uh, brain tonight. Straight in there. In a minute, I apologise. <laughs> yeah. Ah. My beloved friends, I hope this letter finds you in good health and spirits. I apologise for my sudden departure, but it's not a decision that I have made lightly. As much as I have cherished our time and the camaraderie that we've shared, I find myself compelled to return to the carnival. In my time with you, I've witnessed your unwavering determination and valour in the face of adversity. You are a formidable pair and you have the strength to overcome whatever challenges lie ahead. But with everything that's going on I fear my presence may inadvertently hinder your progress rather than aid it. Our quest, your quest now, is one of great importance but my involvement with all the mysteries and the challenges that I carry could distract you from your true purpose there's forces at play beyond my understanding my own quest for answers must continue elsewhere know that you will always have my deepest love and gratitude for the experiences we've shared the bonds we forge, though brief, will forever hold a special place in my heart, and I will cherish these memories of our time as I move forward and remember each of you fondly. If fate allows, our paths may cross again one day, but until then I bid you farewell and I wish you all the luck, all the strength in your endeavours. Know that you have a friend in me no matter the distance. With my love and warm regards, Carsis, the untouchable swordsman. I was about as close as an Irish accent you're getting from me tonight, folks. Sorry. That's pretty good. <coughs> that Jewel, Jewel would have been uh, reading that over Lex's shoulder. So Lex would just hear a, a sniff. Um, <clears throat> well... I, I had a dream about my past. Maybe Curses did something similar and the pull of it was too great to ignore. Uh, I, th I think after all he has been through over the last uh, day, day or they have, uh, well, been through. They were uh, telling us about where they came from, and I suppose they did just come along for the ride. I can, I can see how uh, possibly even this place, this place, may have uh, enlightened them to what they are really looking for. Well. <clears throat> Lex, you uh, won't be going anywhere just yet, will you? No, I think our, uh, our fates are intertwined a little bit with more for the foreseeable future. Yes. I have not completed what I 
left home for, even though weirdly I seem to be heading back that way. It, uh, I yeah. wish I had more, uh, well, yes, I wish I had more to go on, but it seems like I may find answers back home. It would, it would be ironic if uh, you left home and then in our quest for M, we found them back home. It would uh, it'd come full circle. Certainly, I, I, I think they are quite a formidable uh, person, so I hope they are nowhere near my family. Um, True. But maybe clues, and yes, maybe you're right. If so, then I'm glad to meet them there and stop them. You know, Lex, it was weird... When you brought me back, I, I said to you, I I didn't know if I wanted to go home or not. I think I did not know, want to... I did not know because uh, the part of me, the childish part, just wanted to go home, be be safe, have uh, to be cared for. The other half of me did not want to go home at all because I had known nothing. And I've been gone six-ish months. I have learnt a lot along the way, but uh, nothing of what I really wanted to know, and I am a wanted being. Yeah, but I feel like the last 40, 48 hours have uh, paid dividends in our investigation, and I think we're on the right path now. Yes. Yes. Uh, silver linings. Quite right. Um, given we've woken up, is it morning or is it still the middle of the night? the dawn is breaking as we speak um the last thing that sort of jewel saw before she went to go and get the water was was dawn itself or the sun just rising um and that that golden light faint golden light just now piercing into your room providing a little bit of warmth in the the darkness even though you know that the the rooms in the azure pillar are a constant temperature it's constantly comfortable but something about those dreams has just knocked you both slightly perhaps uh, because i am slightly dreading going home but also looking forward to it i have uh, had a quite a weird dream wasn't that much of a fan of it was yours a dream about your childhood as well? Certainly of my village. Yeah, I dreamt of home as well. Well, the home before Mechanis. Anyway. Your home before Mechanis? Yeah, when I was when I was a child. <clears throat> in Adonia, in the Oblivion House, before I ventured into the portal that led me to Mechanis, I was almost there. I lived here to the west. There are a great many things that uh, I forget we do not know about each other. Yeah. However, it has been a very short period of time we have known each other. Well, I, I bring up information as it becomes pertinent to the, the conversation or the joint mission that we're on. I suppose I mean, uh, it just never really came up. So do I, I suppose. <laughs> <clears throat> we we may venture to my homeland one day. But that's uh, that's not on the cards for now. <laughs> when we find M. Yeah, and all the other letters of the alphabet, we don't know who they are. <laughs> Let's not add to our list now, Lex. Oh, it is a shame we uh, do not know where Cassis is going. However. We are all wanted, including... They are very wanted. Yes. Maybe it was good that we, we do not know. Well, yeah, that it protects them and us, I suppose, if we don't know. Yes. <clears throat> um, before we uh, go see the Archmage and uh, grab, grab some breakfast, you might, I just need to... Meditate, if you don't mind. By all means. I feel all, all out of sorts. I just need to center myself. If I roll a good dice, anyway. 
do so if not emotional wreck today please oh how convenient right here we go 12 12 you are fine you manage to break through Just... that uncertainty and center yourselves cog sort of sits next to you just staring at you with that single unblinking eye oh i'm sure that makes everyone feel calm <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> jewel would would leave the room <clears throat> um to let you meditate this time uh so that she can ponder on what's also happened and whether she gets in trouble or not, she's gonna she's gonna walk up and down the the, the staircase <clears throat> uh, just to sort of clear her clear her head. Okay. As you do wander up and down that staircase, your your cape just flows in the the gentle breeze that your pace creates. And you can feel that that lightness to it now, that almost ethereal nature to it. And even you, as you look behind, you see how it almost disappears or shifts into into starlight and then reforms into that red fabric. Eventually you see Elysian sort of down down the stairs and they look up and sort of see you and there's a curious look and they begin to make their way up towards you you continue to pace and Elysian sort of walks over to Jewel, everything um, everything okay? You seem agitated Oh I'm sorry I am usually a lot better at uh, adding things like that Yes um, I don't suppose you know that uh, Cassis left in the the middle of the night yes um they said they'd left a note but it seemed important they had i was instructed not to stop them no it would be unwise <laughs> well it is a uh yes everything is fine You 100% sure? And he's going to make an insight check. Um, roll me a deception check then, please. 15. 15. I won't pry. Whatever is going on is obviously personal. And it, with it has been a few weeks, and is leaving. we have, uh, well, life just keeps giving us blows. So, it is probably best time that uh, Lex and I head on our journey. Well, that is what I had sort of come to speak to you about. Master Alaric has asked for another audience and then has granted you passageway to wherever you see fit. Um, apparently he already knew that you had completed the research you needed to do here um, do you not find that I've sometimes annoying given up him question. knowing that much I've, I've given up questioning I... it you know it's one of those things where it just <laughs> happens uh, at the beginning it was weird um, but Master Alaric is a great great wizard and a great you, you, you end up going how um, do you oh of course you do you know <laughs> I, you just stop asking, really. Yeah, it's yes. one of those things. Like, I, I was granted this staff um, the day before the restoration, and now I'm the warden of the pillar. Um, he knows many, many things. I am in awe and in debt to all of you. Mm. I'll allow the awe. The debt, maybe not. Well, you have... For some part, cleared our names. Maybe only in this tower. Maybe to no one else. However, it has lifted uh, a certain weight off our shoulders. Certainly off my mind. I'd argue you've 
cleared your own names with the research. We just... Well, Master Alaric obviously sees something. So, we are at his bidding. I have one job here, and that's to defend this tower, this pillar, against anyone who would seek to do us or it harm. You Might I um, make a suggestion, and if M ever returns, stab first, ask questions later? Mayanora? Yes. Well, if she passes beyond the threshold, then there's already spells here to... Um, Let's say it's going to be messy. Oh, I kind of want to trick her into it now. <laughs> well, we have to find her. Yes. First. Indeed. Um, perhaps if I may make a suggestion, Mayanora, from the sounds of it, holds answers you seek. So as much as you may want to stab first, ask questions later. Maybe stab a little bit, then ask some questions, then stab some more. Well, I found if you keep them alive, you can actually uh, stab them more. So, you know, take that what you will. I will, um... Yes, leave you to that. Sorry, a little dark. I am, uh... Stop, stop, stop. No, 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 listen, <laughs> look. You've got your own ways of getting information. I am not one to cast judgment. It is what it is. Why don't I have some breakfast brought room. up to you, and then you can... Ah, Lex. Oh, it appears I've arrived uh, just in time for breakfast. Hi. I was just about to say, if you want breakfast, I'll have it sent up to you, and then we'll uh, see about getting you up to Master Alaric. Please, is it uh, too much to uh, to ask for some, um, some rations for the road? We do not know if we're going to be going... Yet somewhere that would be of uh, use in that respect. I don't see why that would be beyond an ask. Thank you. Good plan. Lex, that leads us to our question. Where did we actually want to go? Well, um, <clears throat> we did say we're looking for M, right? And uh, they're an elven individual. So we said we were going to go to the heavily populated Elven City, we which indeed. is your hometown, right? It, it, it is uh, north of here, and the name escapes me because I am tired. So and, uh, drastically try and go through my uh, folder system here. And uh, um, well, while you rack your brains for that, I was also thinking that if if that does fail, and they, and it's going to be weird looking for an elven needle in an elven haystack, but. If that fails, I was thinking, if you wanted to disappear, Zumkar would be a good place to hide. I mean, we've already met nefarious individuals there. I know we, um, we, it might not be the place we want to go back to, but we may have to retrace our steps a little bit. I, uh, you unfortunately have a point there. Um, well, let us try and get as much information as possible closer to end although uh, yeah. that is a good question would we be able to get from Dryad's Gate that is it I knew I would find it eventually and he's going to stand there with that outburst like oh <laughs> shit <laughs> I would hope we can get from Dryad's is it like, Gate to is uh, it like the fireplace on Harry Potter you just say what you want to go and you just we just <laughs> now, now in Dryad's Gate Diagonally! <laughs> Diagonally! <laughs> <laughs> Dave and I are both waiting for that one there. Yep. <sighs> oh. um, yes, I... Um, damn, do you remind us if you can remember? It's been a while for all of us. Did we not hear that that's possibly where... Mayan went straight afterwards, or there was there was some. There wasn't just there are elves up there. Let's go. I'm sure it was something like they were last seen there or something. Um, if I remember rightly, it's the um. No, maybe not. Do you know what? I don't know. I, I can't remember, remember whether it was the family or some there, I, but then I, sus no, it be. I suspect it was 
she's elven. That's probably where she grew up and came from. Let's go with that. I'm, I, I, I'll work with that. <laughs> I think it was as tenuous as that, Dave. I'm not gonna lie. No, I knew it was tenuous. Yeah. I knew it was tenuous because even, even if it was she left there from from the Azure Pillar, it's still like a cold case. <laughs> so, because yeah. um, we know that she wasn't there a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Like one hundred percent. Well, unless unless you uh, want to go back to Thalysra and risk it, I think that uh, Thalysra is is very much not where we should go right now. Um, I think we need to annoyingly skirt around that place as much as possible. Yeah. If we could, we could try and reach out to the magistrate again, I think we still have the sending stone. Oh, did we leave it with Cassis? Or have I got it? Let me check my inventory. If not, they left it on the bed. <laughs> I was going to say, if there was yeah, anything yeah, yeah, yeah. important in Cassis's inventory that you need for the campaign, no, it, it will have been left. I've got it. We're good. Oh, can I say he took all the soul coins with him, though? Then. Yep. That seems not right, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we, we have got the soul, um, the soul stone. It's not fucking Thanos. Sending still. Um, <laughs> we, could, we, we could try and communicate with the magistrate to see if he's got any word on Thelis or to see if he um, may know. Man. If anybody has returned, yeah. More precisely, let's check that he is okay, because uh, I believe his last missive was, um, they have found me. <laughs> yeah. So, let us check he is okay. Now, if, if you are Mayan, and you knew what we knew, she would be in Thalissa, because we cannot go there. However, if not, and she needed to get out of there as she was uh, highly suspect maybe you are right she is somewhere else unfortunately that leads us up to pretty much the rest of the world so yeah, yeah. let's start with where she grew up let's find as much information on her so that when we meet we know everything about her I'll, uh, should I reach out to the magistrate now? Do you think it'd be too early? Is there time differences? We're not that far away from Thales, are we? Really far. Like, Is there a day, time difference? A couple of days. I mean, it's, it's not flat earth. <laughs> yeah. But it is all on one continent. This is not a world map. True. True, so no, there's not. If I look at... There's probably going to be... Couple there probably hours. will be a couple of hours. A couple of hours time difference. So this we'll be it's... ahead. Yeah, it'll still, it'll still be, uh, you know, early right. morning for them. Yeah, okay. Let's, uh... Have breakfast, speak to Master Alaric, and possibly even find out where we are going and message from there. If they can get us to Dryad's Gate, I hope so. I'm sure they could. There's a teleportation circle, there must be. The wrong way to find out. Cool, we'll head up to Master Alaric then. Very good. Um, so before you head up to Master Alaric, breakfast is brought to your room, um, and you almost see you're finishing discussing this on the stairs. Um, Elysian at some point has just disappeared off, leaving you to your conversation, um, and then you see somebody else bringing sort of a, a tray, which um, they almost telekinetically sort of carry up the stairs, and then this is yours and sort of escort you into your room you sit and you eat your breakfast sort of small talk 
inconsequential chatter, shall we say. And then there is a soft knock on the door as somebody sticks their head in. Master Alaric will see you now if you are both ready. It is like he knew, knew that we were finished breakfast. Of course. Master Alaric sees many things, this is true. Please do follow. Jewel does a quick sweep of the room, make sure that they haven't left anything. And then goes. So you grab all of your belongings and you head up the long and winding stairs all the way back to the top of the azure pillar and into that grand, almost uh, full or room that takes up the whole expanse of the top of this pillar. Um, almost like it's a lighthouse type situation. Um, and again, there are curtains <coughs> drawn... But you do see Master Alaric sat behind the desk this time, and as you enter, his, his head is down, and he's sort of flicking through papers, and he just raises a hand. Do come, do come. And again, there are two chairs this time, set before the desk. You also notice some bundles on the table, or on the desk, in front of each chair. Nice. Good morning. Um, Sorry, I've got to ask the curious question. How, when you when you know things before they're about to happen, or you you, is it because can you see the great equation, or can you see time? You can I see you, time? You, uh... Well, how how do you how do you know the things as you know and see the things that you see as a as you know, we rediscovered chronomancy uh, a couple of yeah, years ago, indeed. and I'm yeah. just I'm just curious whether you actually knew it was there this whole time, and you are a practitioner yourself. Chronomancy is always well, yes, it's existed, of course. Um, in order to, well, it was lost, so to speak. What I do is not chronomancy; it's divination. It's seeing things, not necessarily the the future, or and it's not like I am changing time. It is just sight. I am just granted glimpses of things that could happen, may happen, and those that I am absolutely certain about. So, I, well, there's no point in fighting the inevitable, one says. Okay. So, um, two will journey on. One has other matters to see to. Yes. Their own battle to fight. And you wish to head towards the elves. Is there a place you can get us into Dryad's Gate? Dryad's Gate, perhaps not. But I can certainly... We have a, a trade route of sorts between <clears throat> ourselves and, when I can remember it, uh, Morse, or Morse Tacy. It's one of the Given that, uh, smaller cities. You are supportive of our investigation and uh, trying to find Artemis' killer, do you think? Trying to find out, trying to find M, this is a, a good starting point? Do you agree with our course of action? May, may, an, may an over, advice? we believe, grow up in or around Dryad's Gate? It's the whole reason for get, wanting to go. Menorah. Menorah. Where did we pick Menorah up from? Hmm. If you'll bear with me, I would like to... I don't often do this, but given the importance, and they take that and that gemstone that sits on the desk in front of them, they just place a hand over the top of it and their eyes sort of close and then flash open wide. Natural 20. Oh! Get in! Yes! And it's almost like this, where their eyes go wide, the... Um, the pupils bleed to pure white and just white colour overtakes their eyes and there's this glow. S 
Search for an elder inside more Stacy. They will tell you of wish, which, wish. They will tell you of that which you wish to know. Ugh. Hmm. The elder you seek. From what I saw, there is a not necessarily a central building, but a grand building within Morse Tacy. It is usually, or it was once, a throne room, no longer, as the uh, kingdoms <coughs> within Drymere now, the individual kingdoms are now united under one. Uh, the, the throne of Ireland now is the seat of power within Drymere, so to speak, within that whole area. Less of a king, more of a lord, but it is how the elves police themselves, so to speak. Still, within there, there is a group of elders. The one you seek is the older female. Did not grab her name. She will have more information for you. Thank you. That is very helpful. I didn't ever tra travel that far to Moore's Tacy. I only uh, went to Dryad's Gate once in my life. Yes, and your journey previously would have taken you south through Eleanor and Asenath and then a boat. Yes, there were routes. Uh, shipping routes to, towards uh, that, but no, I. Uh, you are right. I went south. Hmm. Interesting. It is weird to think that I uh, travelled so close to the Crystalline Isle and did not know anything about it. Most ships tend to keep a wide berth of the shoreline, given the nature of the. The place? I'm glad they did. Indeed. Well, you have discovered much. You have unlocked much. For that, I am very grateful. There is a whole new well. group of acolytes and initiates that we will be able to introduce to the Azure Pillar and the Crystalline Isle, thanks to your discoveries, Lex. As for you, Jewel, you touch powers which are long dormant, from what I understand. Long, long dormant. Jewel sits up quite, yeah, again, noticeably uncomfortable to, certainly to the, uh, to Master Alaric. I have not seen anything, mind you. It's just simply the nature of the power that has washed through this place the last few days. A reality shift is one thing, and creating a whole new area within the, the library is, is something. To have otherworldly magic and energy pass through and change something so small, that is a feat unto itself. For someone who is rather distrustful of arcane <coughs> items and other magics, it is an unusual feeling to accept it. It's is the fear really about the magic or just the unknown? I can answer that, I think. By all means, Lex, if you have an answer for that, then... Fucking hell, my light's freaking out. <laughs> I thought you were in a lightning storm, then. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> or I'm expecting I'm Darude Sandstorm to start kicking out in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I if I go dark, it's because the electrics are about to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was, I was, I was being facetious, trying to answer on behalf of Jewel. There, I think uh, 
I, I infer is that oh. you like control and the fact that you feel out of control is, uh, is what worries you is my perception. Maybe that is something I will have to uh, ponder on over the, the coming days. Maybe find the, the root of why I... Well, I... I was brought up to not trust the arcane. Well, think of it not as magic, Maybe. then. Think of it as just a otherworldly like gift. Perhaps. And uh, hopefully this will also be the path of acceptance for you. You would like that, Lex. Hopefully. I know. Perhaps it is a chance to explore your youth. Understand the, the steps that brought you here. And the step that nearly took me away from it. Yes. Um, Still, you carry a degree of arcane items now. They are not unknown to you. So perhaps do not fear them, but use them for what they are meant to be. That is why I'm less uh, concerned of them, as, as you say, I have an understanding of them. Hey, Lex, maybe you mm. are right. I usually am. Yeah. Very good. Now, um... I'm conscious you are keen to be on the move. And it's not often I allow questions to be asked of me, but you have this time, you have this moment here in this room. There are many things we could discuss, but the choice is yours. Oh, I feel like I've been put on the spot. <laughs> to be fair, I've asked my question, which was about whether he thought we was on the right course of action, and then he uh, did his crystal ball shit. So, Jewel, it's your question. <laughs> Swerved. Sorry, I just love the fact Sufficiently that that... Sufficiently slopey-shouldered. <laughs> that sounded... Just like crystal bullshit and crystal bullshit. Uh, <laughs> Both apply. Which Both in this apply. place is probably... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you... Um, do you have much information as to what the... The, the battlefields to the east are or were we walked through them to get here and uh, well I could see hmm, ghosts, apparitions, phantoms of the fighting and well I guess there had been many, many a battle many a even street brawl and that is the first time I've seen anything like that. Yes. Make me a persuasion check, please. Nice. Half expecting Danny when he's reaching up there to have the I have the power. <laughs> he man moment. Unlimited. Except it would have been more like something out of Home Alone, just the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, persuasion 17. 17. How much are you aware of the divine war? Pardon me. <laughs> Hello, my bike that went past there, wasn't it? Oh, mate. Yeah, just <laughs> constant hair dryers driving past the bloody place at the moment. It's all, right. it's all good. Um. I... very little. To be honest. Well, just the one of you then. Long ago, long, long ago, before Nihilin was 
placed wherever it was and before well before the restoration there was a time of peace the gods or these individuals that had gained great power because what is a god ultimately but we don't need to get into that um, there was a time when creatures were made creations there was also a time of great great conflict After this age of creation, there were some gods who decided they didn't agree with the controls that had been put in place. They didn't agree with the rules and the, the parameters that had been set by a number of individuals. And ultimately they betrayed. There was a great rending amongst the Pantheon. No longer a... a linear thing, but two factions formed. The Prime, the... the Renders, the... the Betrayers, if you like. And a great war was fought across this land. Indeed, it reshaped the land. There are battlefields peppered across the whole world. It seems that the events of 30 years ago have uncovered some of the most ancient battlefields. When you entered this pillar, I sense you had touched something of great historical importance. You notified us, of course, of the activities to the east, so we have since sent folks out to understand, and this, this battlefield carries with it the echoes of that divine war. Indeed, it seems to be a place where the disciples of the deity known as Arathis fought against one of the, the betrayers. We've not been able to figure that out yet, one of the renders, but... It is also the place where one of the great powers of Arathis supposedly perished or diminished. We've only been able to divine so much, but the name Paragon is one that stands out in this area. The Divine War ended with a a diminishing of sorts, a separation that the, the gods put between themselves and mortal beings. Some deities were trapped, some were lost, some perished. The rest either banished or withdrew. That's not to say their influence hasn't always eked out into the world. There have been other wars fought in the name of gods, but not that we need to discuss right now. Would any uh, would anyone touched by the divine see these echoes in the battlefields? It is not something I have heard of. This ability to see echoes, almost see past events. This is new. Then perhaps it has something to do with the Watcher? Yes, this name escapes me. The Watcher. I feel like I should know. There is a... Like there is something. Very fairly vague book in the library. That's where the information I got it is as much as I can get. Ah, were you able to retrieve yes. the uh, the artifact of the what seems to be a mechanical creature buried underground? Were you able to retrieve that? Um, no. We found a hole 
but there was nothing in it. Ah, oh, shit. Fuck, we woke it up. <laughs> We've unleashed a titan. Brilliant. <laughs> <clears throat> This whole idea of deities, I, I can see it's playing on your mind. You've both uncovered powers that are strange, from my simple understanding. The one, the more followers one has, true followers, not, not in the sense that I have people here who serve under me, but people who truly believe with their very souls in your very being that grants somebody, or grants an individual, power. That is one way of getting power. It is, um, The other... Sorry, Jewel, continue. It is really slightly... Well, it, it, it lies better with me that... to imagine these as uh, extremely powerful creatures uh, beings, um, as you say, uh, they almost got there or stay there from the followers. I suspect whatever creatures you came across, or creature or being, probably perished on that battlefield. Or shut oh. down, or... If it was a creation of, short, of sorts, perhaps the power of Paragon... This individual that diminished there, perhaps that was the undoing of this, this mechanical thing you uncovered. Am I mixing campaigns slash other shit that we watch? Paragon's Call. No, Paragon's Call. Oh, am I like totally off the wall here? You, you are mixing things. There. That's fine. I'm just going to leave that on Call there. Paragon's Call is, uh, <laughs> is a. Criti critical role thing. Fine. <laughs> Why um, <laughs> I was like, the fuck is going on in my brain? Um, <clears throat> I I was uh, more meaning the gods are these in, in, instead of thinking them as these. Uh, well, I know they are immensely powerful, but they are beings. So to think of them as beings with great power and who have got there via whatever means mm. uh, makes me a little they are not so separated from you and I just different levels but otherwise it all seems it, it, it why well, is that question of why are we here <laughs> yes well listen they are like us in some ways but there is a separation in degrees of power I cannot deny the the powers that they held at least and to reach that state well we all know there's only ever been one that has ever reached that state for a mortal to deific power how they did that is a great mystery If you don't that? mind, we are not going to answer that one. Uh, we're going to stick on our own. It's merely a... Uh, merely a footnote in our conversation, so to speak. Well. I have learnt a lot about the Watcher while I have been here. I uh, hope I learn much more. And maybe I can come back and write a few chapters myself. You would both be most welcome. Perhaps in time, Jewel, your distrust of the arcane will waver and maybe you'll even pick up a few tricks. Here is one final question from me then. How do we get back? <laughs> when the time is right. You will be able to return here. That is good to know. Very big. 
How are we supposed to know what the protocol is? We're returning. You already know the protocol, Lex. You've been here, you have seen right, us. Right, I'd rather not have to you go know. through the, the dragon test again, if, if possible. Is there like a shortcut? You have already passed that test. I do believe, Lex, that Master Alaric will probably see the fact we will need to come back. If I understand correctly. Right. I may, or it may just be a case that you find your way back here, naturally, because you need to be back here. But you have passed the dragon's test. Okay, it's you a lifetime. You know your pass. face is. It's good to know. I have not known him to forget an individual for as long as he has been bound. Lex, are you uh, very well? Are you ready? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be. Excellent. Well, in front of you, you have two bundles. Each of you, two weeks worth of rations, as you requested. Thank you. Thank you. I have also asked for some of our potions to be included in there as well. So each of you has been granted four of our most basic potions of health and potions of healing. And I've also asked for three of our slightly enhanced potions of healing. So potions of greater healing, if you like. Three of those each. Oh, you fucking hero. That's... And how many normal potions of healing was it? Four each. Oh. We'll need them in about 20 minutes. <laughs> we'll arrive. Ah! Uh, <laughs> greater there it is. <laughs> and three items to back. Cool. Look at that. It's for the best. Yeah, we shouldn't have asked for rations, we should just ask for all the potions they've got. I'd like one of those beer hats with a potion on each side, thank you very much. <laughs> 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 just sip it. <laughs> My only other guidance in this, yes, we have granted you some small gifts, but the gifts that you have earned while you have been here, do not neglect them. I think they will see you through many a challenge going forward. Thank you. I also offer one more piece of advice before you go. You will cross paths with many in the coming days and weeks. Be sure of those who you wish to ally yourselves with. I wish you would have told us that a few days ago. Unfortunately, I did not know you a few days ago. <clears throat> uh, so, then very quickly, Jewel will get out one of the pieces of parchment that was given to her while she was here. <clears throat> we'll tear a smallish section off and very quickly scribble on there. Because uh, it's just a small bit of parchment. Um, a note to that just says Cassis if you do return here and you have a way of getting a note to my village it is Stoneback village I leave the name of my of Jules parents on there they will know how to get in touch And just jewel. Folds it up. <clears throat> Master Elric, in the unlikely event that uh, Cassis does return here, could I trust that you will give him this piece of paper? It is done. Thank you. Very well. Well, I can't transport you from here. 
but somebody will be along shortly to uh, take you where you need to go. Listen, it's been a very great pleasure getting to know the two of you. I look forward to you. seeing you in the future. It's been a very fruitful visit. I appreciate your castle and your hospitality. Please do find out what has happened to Artemisia, why this tragedy has fallen on our doorstep. It's a continent, I believe. So it may be. And then at this point there is just the sound of a door opening. It doesn't creak, but you just hear the shift across the floor. Zalaric looks up and says, Ah, yes. It is time, it would seem. Please, take your things. Um, should we need to be, we will be in touch, but you know where we are. Thank you. We'll go. Au revoir. I shall follow whoever it is at the door. Alaric, uh, so it's the same individual who didn't give you a name previously, oh. but they just sort of... If you will follow me, I will take mm -hmm. you to the teleportation circle and I will send you on your way. Is it a prerequisite to have a whispery voice <laughs> to, uh, to be a wizard? <laughs> I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> Eh? <laughs> what? what is that? <laughs> so you are taken down the stairs um, and outside of the Azure Pillar, but this time to where that small garden was with the sort of babbling brook um, and small stones, the vines that grow play, uh, sort of in various places, this grand tree that grows as well, and in the middle of this small pool that is created by the brook you see a um a black stone with blue and purple veins running through it and in the center of it there is a a spell circle if the two of you will please just stand on the the teleportation stone i will cast the spell and send you on your way is there anything you need to prepare before we go or are you ready to go now um, do you know what we should expect at the other end? Um, it is an elven settlement, so it will be full of elves, and there is also... I mean, like, they, good... they expect people to come and go all the time. It's not going to be weird. We just appear oh, it is out of a... nowhere, right? It is a trade route, so... Um... Oh, okay. oh, in fact, sorry. And pulls out a parchment and hands it to you. This is a... Um, a rite of passage, so to speak, from us to to Morse Tacy, and then you should be able to uh, avoid any conflict. Thank you. Jewel gets into your pocket. Jewel gets into the position that she got into when they were leaving a Gruz. So basically, like, quite hunkered down onto the floor, tail in. Excuse me. <laughs> I will, I will do the Terminator 2 Judgment Day beaming down pose, but with clothes on. <laughs> so this wizard is going to look at you both and think, oh, and if, yeah, okay, if that's how you want to go, that's how you want to go. Uh, I'm just following you just take a book. This is not what we're supposed to do now. <laughs> no, no judgment, no judgment, it's fine. They take out a book and open it and flick through a few pages and just begin to chant. And as they chant, they hold their hand forward. Uh, and arcane energy just begins to glow around this stone. You see the blue and the purple veins begin to light up, which in turn grants light to the etched spell circle that is in here. And this blue light begins to glow brighter and brighter and brighter. And there is a moment where you just feel weightless. And then the light fades. Around you, you instantly feel the lack of that 
quite static feeling. You find yourself in a small um, copse of trees and in front of you you can see the walls of a, a small city or a large town if you like. This white marble um, constantly overgrown with vines and leaves and you can hear the the hubbub of a city beyond um, and I think in that moment we are going to go take a short break and then we'll see what more Stacey has to hold mm -hmm. very good folks well thank you very much for the first half we'll see you in a few Hello. That, didn't, that, didn't, that, that didn't work at all that fell miserably there we go that's not a background <laughs> why not you know <laughs> It definitely, teleported in. Definitely. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Don't panic. Don't panic, Mr. Manry. We definitely forgot to talk oh, to the magistrate. Everybody had a good break. No, we were going to do that we once we arrived here. Now, if you want. Yeah, that's definitely what we're going to do now. So, as you <laughs> land then... Um, and you can see the city off in the in the distance, so to speak. You can see the walls. Um, yes, you can see those white marble walls. Um, what what do you want to do, folks? <laughs> Sending stone. Um, <laughs> I think I want to chat to the magistrate just to see if they're okay um, before we head into the town and go on go on the hunt. Okay, so you're going to take the sending stone out. Yeah, it's not twenty. Do I get twenty-five words? Yeah. I can't so remember. The mic in front of my face, so you can hear me better. I really can't remember whether which one this one does. Um, bear with. <laughs> Did you know? Sending. I might, um, I might have had the wrong sending 25 stone. 25 words or my, less. I, I reckon I've added the wrong sending stone to my uh, to my pack because I've got a fucking wondrous item here that has a rank 1, rank 2, rank 3 and I can hear rumours and burn <laughs> shit. That that was always the kind of sending stone that, that showed up in my inventory when we had it in the last campaign, but again, as you say... You're then... looking at the Acquisitions Incorporated sending stone, so please remove that and put the other one in. Sosa. <laughs> 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 well, that one bit. looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that one, thank you. Yeah, I, was, I wonder why I couldn't find the 25 words thing. Alright. Sending stones. Yeah, they're the, they're the boring looking ones now. 25 <laughs> words. So, I will say to... We are safe. Investigation continues. Looking for Menorah, Artemisia's receptionist. Are you safe? And can you provide intel on her? That's 20 words. Peace out. <laughs> Peace, motherfucker. Um, so you get a response almost instantly, and it sounds almost out of breath. Oh, still on the move. Glad you are safe. I don't know of any Mayanora, but I do know of Mayon, who has been missing since that night. Keep in. <laughs> what? Did he go <laughs> because he's dead? Or because he ran out of No, it just went keep in, and then that was the end of it. Oh, fuck now. The magistrate is safe. Um, he, he confirmed that Mayan has been missing since since Armija's death, which 
aligns with what we know already. So I suppose that's, that's helpful confirmation. But that's the, all the intel he had. I tell you one thing, uh, if we can um, find information, is as the issues that were in Thalissa, um, have they stopped? That would be great. Again, I know we cannot ask uh, the, the, the the magistrate. Uh, he probably is not in uh, you know well informed areas. However, I wonder if um, uh, possibly news travels. Um, uh, I don't know who to ask, but it would be would be nice to see if uh, anyone knows. Also, Alexa, I wow. think you were right. I think I started whispering while I was in that tower, and it was. Very weird. It's nice to be back out in the open air. What? So you can shout? <clears throat> well, you know, I'm not I'm not, not necessarily much of the shouting person, but um, yes, I realised I was definitely speaking with those tones. <laughs> Make me perception checks, please. No. Uh, oh, six. <laughs> 26. <laughs> so in this moment, you just hear this jewel, you specifically hear this strange... I will look straight towards wherever that sound's coming from. And it sounds like it's getting closer. Uh, and in this moment, you see this strange creature beelining towards you. It doesn't look too dissimilar from Lorendrax. Um, in the fact that there are these strange eye stalks that Cock peek it. off it, and there's this central eye. But then there's this mouth that just extends with these massive fangs, and it's beelining straight towards you. What would you like to do? Looks on your guard. Fucking kill it. That's what I want to do. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't. I'll, I don't want to start a fight just yet. <clears throat> um, what the... What? H hello? Are you are you hitter meters? From the trade post? Again, you're just going to hear this. <laughs> and you see these two... Whereas Lorendrax was just this great orb with these eye stalks that came off there is these two strange almost tentacle like appendages that flow in front of this creature it's very red skin that central eye it's almost like the eyelid is sort of peeled back and bloodshot as if this thing's been awake for hours you've got that some, uh, some or drinks far too much alcohol <laughs> um and we are going to have to roll some Initiative. <laughs> well, we're not getting out of this one, are we? I couldn't make it the first one back without a little bit of combat. Well, I rolled a nine, so. Well, wait, bear with me just a second. Go to sort something out. Uh, right. <laughs> Let's move a few things around. So, so Lex, you rolled a fourteen. No, a nine. <laughs> I'll nine, take a fourteen. Sorry. I don't know where I don't know where I heard fourteen from. <laughs> I don't know why the fuck I did not give his aid this morning, Dave. I mean, he literally Matt, he literally said, is there anything you'd like to do before we leave? And we were like, no, we're cool. We're all good. That's absolutely fine. We're, we're off to see the wizard. This is great. <laughs> No, 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 you, you've been to see the wizard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're going to get fucked. <clears throat> yeah. Excellent. So we have a, a small map. No. <clears throat> oh, I rolled a 19, by the way. A 19, thank you. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, Pretty it, good. It tracks. Jewel saw it. <laughs> Fair. Let's move that over there. Then let's bring this up here. I need to populate. Um, jewel there. In fact, where am I going to put you? Because I'm reusing a map. 
that I used for something else. Just mm-hmm. didn't have time to build on. But. Which I might point out by the fact that I popped onto Incarnate to have a play and realised that it's friggin' impossible. Uh, kudos to you for making these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can be quite fun. Um, cool. So we'll say you teleported actually into this small rundown um, old building of sorts that looks like it was made out of the the rock that was there in this small little cliff edge, um, long abandoned um, and has since been, looks like it's now used as a teleportation point. You've come down the stairs and at this point you've seen this this weird ass creature um, which I will put a token on when I get there. Danny, you probably want to join Albert, mate. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a few weeks, folks. When I can remember how to use Albert, I'll get there. Uh, his map one. looks brilliant. Uh, I can't claim any credit for this one. It is thanks to another oh. anonymous user on Incarnate, because apparently nobody likes to leave the name. <laughs> but it's a fantastic map. So let's just double check the size. Yes. It's large. And then we're going to call this G. And there we go. Cool. So, first up then, as this creature is rapidly, I say rapidly, is steadily approaching you. Um, Jewel, what would you like to do? Um. This will be, yeah, <clears throat> grab the Dusk Dagger. I know it's not going to do much good here, but it feels better than the other daggers. So she'll pick that out and, yeah, what is she going to do with that? I'll actually get that out. Um, right, she will move up. <clears throat> Fine, yeah, she's gonna move up. So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and throw. Now she's gonna go to 20, and she's gonna throw the, the Dusk Dagger from there. So, that is going to be. Make me a wisdom saving throw, please. Marvelous. Wisdom, 12. 12. Uh, as you get up to within a certain distance of this creature, you stare into that central eye and you just freeze. Anyone else stunned? <laughs> They've stunned? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck hell. Straight off the bat. Straight off the bat. Oh, good. So you are okay. now stunned until the start of your next turn. Great, can't move. Can only speak falteringly. Yeah, and as I say, it's as you got to a certain with a certain distance and looked into that central eye. All of a sudden, you just. That's it. Cool, Lex. What do you want to do? Because I rolled really shit. Oh, didn't expect to go next. I thought I was going to be last. I will see. Sorry, I didn't it... give you an initiative order, isn't it? It's Jewel then, Lux. <laughs> I'm going to stay quite far away from it then, seeing what just happened to Jewel. And. Oh, does less restoration work? He's not paralysed, is he? He's stunned. Done. She is sure. done. Yes. Yes. So, plus my, just my turn's to, over. So, <laughs> move to here, and I will chromatic orb that motherfucker. So Very I'll good. just create a sparking ball of energy as I throw. I'm gonna go for lightning damage. 
with a natural 20. Ooh. Holy yes. shit. Straight off the bat. Mm. Oh. All damage, and because it's a natural 20, of course. Ooh. That's that is 31 dead. points of <laughs> lightning damage. <laughs> 31 points of lightning damage. Someone's been in the wizard's tower and has, all, has the batteries recharged. Blimey. <laughs> yeah. Just fucking hurls this orb of lightning, or this, this orb that shifts colour and then turns to sort of white, blue, and yellow as it crackles with lightning energy, then hits this creature and explodes with electrical force and thunderous energy around it. And you just hear this. And you see the creature just sort of. for a moment. Um. And is then bloodied. Holy shit, balls. That was a good hit. <laughs> Get in. Oh, I didn't want that. That was a bit too fucking big. Calm down. <laughs> Real bloodied. <laughs> Leaking shit everywhere. <laughs> um, it is then the creature's turn. Great. Then. Um excellent. Do, 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 do. Um what's the range on them? Oh very good. So, Lex, as you've just hit this thing with the chromatic orb, one of the eyes just whips around towards you and this beam of white just <laughs> streams it way towards you and sort of shines over you. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Ooh. Oh, no. Dirty 20. Oh, Dirty 20. You feel for a moment this drowsiness effect come over you and you just manage to sort of stave it off and keep yourself awake. <sighs> Okay. Could have got worse. One of the other eyes is then going to turn towards you, Jewel, and this um, purplish, bluish ray is just going to shine over you. I need a dexterity saving throw, which you're going to fail because you're stunned. Automatically um, fail. Your dusk dagger loses all magical properties until the start of this creature's next turn. Christ <laughs> on a bicycle. <laughs> if that magic item had any charges, which I don't know if it does. No. Don't think the dusk has a duck. Right, that's fine. Um, excellent. And then... We roll... Uh, that eye is going to round to you again, Lex, and just <laughs> an orange ray towards you, and you feel the heat off it almost immediately. I need a dexterity saving throw, please. Crikey. Oh, no. That's a five. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Whoop, what happened there, Dave? Wrong window. <clears throat> Don't panic. Four of them. Excellent. As this orange ray hits you, the oh, Lex. I might use magical guidance to re-roll my d20 you now. Go for it. Go for it. Just before you... Oh, 11's not any better, is it? Nope. Uh, you are going to take 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 23 points of fire damage. Fucking hell. I'm bloody. Right back at you. Say. Yeah. <laughs> Lex is then also bloodied. Very good. That will be its turn. It's not going to move. It will stay there. Oh, will it? No, it is going to move. We go 5, 10, 15, 20, to there. And then we are over to Jewel. You are no longer stunned. Um, 
now I'm going to give you an opportunity. What do you want to do at the start of your turn? Close my eyes. Very good. <laughs> okay. So you do not have to make the saving throw at the start of your turn then. So. Can't move. But you can't see the this creature now. No. I can, however, somewhat recognise my surroundings. So she will have slumped, <sighs> closed her eyes, and then there is this the dark wisps from behind her as she will misty step. And you can tell me if I need to make a roll for this, but she's going to misty step up here, which should be still within the range. Yep. Um, so I'm just going to get my sheet up there. I just need to make sure that I'd clock that So you are now up on a wall. Yep. And then... Oh, Christ. Can I make a perception check with disadvantage to find out where, you know, sort of where this creature is? Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Um, uh, that's a perception of 15. 15. So you reckon you've got a rough feel for where this creature is on the battlefield as you sort of keep your eyes closed. Cool. I am going, going to... That was my bonus action. I'm going to leap off there and hopefully arc. Is it, is, how tall is that? That's the question, I suppose, where I am. Um, like, 10 or so feet up in the ground? That is 10 feet high. <clears throat> so, as I think I've got a leap of, I think it's a minimum of 5 feet anyway. Um, and then arcing down, I'm hoping that what. Jewel's going to hope that she launches towards G. And stabs with the dagger. Okay. Um, make me an attack roll with disadvantage, then, please. Fucking hell! No. Make it a straight roll because you've you've made your perception check and you passed it. So. Cool. <clears throat> Even with your eyes closed. Dirty twenty. 20 will hit. So I'll land up there. I suppose I was thinking of landing on it, but <laughs> I suppose I would I would make it next to it. I'm land next to him. <laughs> uh, sorry, that is uh, so the dust dagger is literally just a dust dagger, or just a dagger. Uh, so that yep. is uh, no advantage on that, which is fine. What the hell is that? Uh, so that's five points of piercing damage. Five points of piercing damage. And you will take one point of bludgeoning damage as you land on the floor. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it is a ten foot drop. Yep. Um, and I, yeah, there's nothing else I can do there. Very good. Mm. Uh, Lex, go on. No, no, that's, no? It. that's, Done. It, that's it. Okay, Lex, make me a wisdom saving throw, please. Because mm, I'm, I'm close enough to be looking at it. Yep. For the thing. Yep. Fuck. This is five. I'll use magical guidance okay. again because I'm feeling like it's going to work this time. Fifteen. You are not stunned as you feel this wave of energy just wash over you. And there's a moment where your body freezes up and you just use that manipulation that you've got to almost change destiny itself. And re-roll the dice, both figuratively and physically. Um, and sort of snap out of it, ready to go again. Blood just drips from your nose and the sort of burns across your body. See a little bit. I will, because it worked so good last time, I will create another chromatic orb 
and chuck it because I don't want I don't want to risk hitting Jewel with anything else. And I'm feeling quite good with my uh, Manta Corp, so I'll do that again. Ooh, 19 to hit. Yep. And that is 22 points. <laughs> Of lightning damage, I got three, two eights, and a six on the three d eight. Wasn't for that. Lex Ordo, how do you want to do this? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So as it tried to stun me, and I'm kind of taken aback, and then I see it, I'll already be creating it in my hands, and then I'll just aim for the central eye, and it'll just <laughs> like a fastball on a baseball pitch, just go straight into its fucking eyeball. So you do that sort of lean back as you shake off the stun, form the orb, and uh, properly arc your body into it and throw this orb as it just cascades through the air and beams straight towards the central eye of this creature. The creature blinks before this orb just hits it and almost goes into the body of the creature, and then there's just this <laughs> of arcane energy as it explodes. You then notice this creature where electrical energy dissipates around it, then just begins to pulsate. Just... <laughs> it explodes with pure <laughs> arcane energy. Jewel, I need a dexterity saving throw, please. Sure. I mean, I've got my eyes closed, no wonder. That's an 11. <laughs> That's an 11, which means... Jules going in for take... another swipe of it, you know, knowing where it is, and it's like, you know, just suddenly it's not <laughs> six foot back. You take 10 points of force yeah. damage as this arcane energy just <laughs> buffets into you. Um, and we are out of combat. And as I've, and as I've thrown it, I've then just gone down to, to my knees because I'm, I'm pretty fucked. After that, I told you we'd need them within Deep. 20 minutes, those healing potions, didn't I? Yep, yeah, you did. Deep, shuddering breath, he was like. <laughs> um, both of you make me nature checks, then, please. Uh, 17. Nature check. Oh, that, where's my nature? 10. 10. I think this tracks because if I remember rightly, the one who knew most about Beholders was also Lex. Yeah. Um, now, Lex, you recognise this as a form of the same type of creature or same um, t same type of structure as a Beholder, but it's it's not exactly the same. Now, you've heard of rituals that are used to summon creatures from beyond um funnily enough from other realms other planes um the sheer nature of the fact that this was by a teleportation circle and what you understand leads you to believe that this is probably a creature a creature not a creature and an aberration type creature known as a gauth and they feed on magical energy as Jewel is slammed into the rock behind her, she will open her eyes and see the creature dead. Did that thing just explode? You're welcome. <coughs> oh. Lex? What? Lex's hair is still smoking. What, what, what happened? I had my eyes closed. Yeah, yeah they, they, they caught me with a good one there. But uh, <clears throat> I think I did a proportion of retaliation. <laughs> run, uh, run over to Lex and uh, help him up. Uh, well, then you dispatched that pretty good yourself. Um, I, I believe it's called a gauth. From, from what I understand, they, they feed on uh, magical energy, so... Uh, they probably hang around teleportation circles for that for that reason. Oh, so we have this to look forward to every time we go, do we? Uh, I hope not. Um, do you want to 
gather ourselves here before we head into more Stacy. Uh, yes, yes. Um, let's take the time. That is. Um... Uh, yeah, obviously, I'm thinking short rest rather than use a potion of healing. Yeah, yeah. A bit of Smart. thinking. Smart. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So you take an hour or so just to resettle yourselves and and sort of look around the area and it is clearly deserted this looks like this is probably only used for the crystalline circle to pass between um you don't really see anybody else around you don't see any other um any other civilization in this area it's fairly it's cleared out and there was clearly once a house here but other than that it's long since been deserted um but clearly, like, somebody has tried to summon something here in recent times. And this creature has snuck through. Mm-hmm. So the house... Okay, is there anything else you'd go for it? You said the, the little house it has signs of yeah, some little house. Through. No, 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 no. Clearly, by the fact that that creature was here, and you oh, understand the nature of how that creature yeah. was brought here, somebody has tried and failed to summon something, and the gout has snuck through in that failed summoning. Well, that was the best hour's rest anyone's ever had to muck up to follow. Yeah, <laughs> both <Nice>. us. <laughs> it's a um, miracle. Is the this jewel just pulls bits of eye stalk and gore off <laughs> <Yeah>. herself? <laughs> uh, cracks her back. Oh, there we go. Mm. Um, Your dust dagger is back to full potency as well now. Cool. Uh, I uh, once feeling a little better will also then look around. Is there an obvious path to a nearby settlement? Yes, you see the the path. That's sort of the narrow path that leads out of this this part of the woodland. Um, you can also hear the sound of the ocean. I will say that to you as well. And you smell the tang of of sea air. Um, and if you remember from the map, you are in this sort of cove, so to speak, quite a large cove of three small islands, um, which form part of the Dry Merian region. You are at the most eastern on the most eastern island, the most eastern point of that island as well. Um, so you can sort of hear that off to your your left, so to speak. Um, but you do see this narrow path that leads through the trees before opening out onto what is clearly m- more of a main road that runs almost um, perpendicular to this small track. And as you then look where that road leads, it goes up towards the the white marbled walls of what you can assume is the city of Morse Tacy. Um. Before we enter, I think it's only right that I should uh, protect us a little more than I should have done this morning, and then I'll cast aid on us at third level, so we get, Very good. get the ten extra hit point. Ten. Nice. You'll be okay. If we get into a scrap in town, we'll probably need them. <laughs> Very good. So you feel that vitality sort of um, almost tick through you, Jewel. There's this ticking motion. Love it. Fantastic. <laughs> it's like the only, it's like, it's the only um, graphic and overlay I've, I've made. <laughs> I really do need to make some more. <laughs> it's fine. We've got time. Loads of time. <clears throat> cool. Um, so I will make the assumption that you're going to head your way through to Morse Tacy. Yes. Yep. Very good. So you join that main thoroughfare, that main road, and head up towards the city itself. Um, and you pass beneath this large open archway um, as you pass beyond the city walls. There doesn't seem to be any guards or such on the wall, but you do see individuals that have got bows slung across their back or these double-bladed 
um, wooden staves or staffs of, of sorts. Um, when I can get back to my notes, as you look then around the city of Morse Tacy, you see this absolute gem enfolded within the the verdant embrace, if you like, of um, the ancient woodland that surrounds this area and forms Dryamir itself. There is a, in contrast with the situation you've just been in, a tranquil allure that whispers tales of the elven heritage around this area and you can see examples of trade going on. Um, this city is a, a testament to the artistry of its people um, and that bond between elves and nature. Uh, you see the buildings themselves are, are all white marble and they're graced with this elegance of delicate vines and woodland motifs. Um, this all stands tall against that backdrop of towering trees and the towering forest. Um, the city seems to dwell in harmony with the ever-changing moods of land and sea, knowing that the sea is not too far away. You can hear still that melodic rhythm of the waves. And as you hear that and sort of hear the leaves rustling in the wind, it's almost this intertwined perfect symphony that creates uh, an ethereal ambiance resonating through the city streets. You can see clear examples of elven craftsmanship and this flourishes throughout the city. Um, each work of arc is a, is a testament to the spirit of the forest um, and the skillful hands of the people that have, that have crafted it. You do see a market square that boasts an array of finely, wood, uh, finely carved wooden sculptures, um, silverware that shimmers in the light, and, and other wonders that are inspired by the bountiful land and the sea. Um, you see what is quite clearly a strong fishing trade in the city, um, and that fishing and mastery of the elven craftsmanship sort of weaves together to really form the heartbeat of this city clearly sustaining the people who live there enlivening its streets with commerce and, and vitality as you look towards the center of this city you see two things you see a very ancient tree a very large and ancient tree almost like a giant redwood if you like stands huge the trunk clearly bigger than any man or person almost the width and the diameter of a building in some cases um this is clearly well looked after it's almost revered by the the city's inhabitants um you actually see that the gnarled roots of this tree seem to intertwine with the the buildings around and the city around it as well and there's a an aura of wisdom and tranquility that permeates the air around it you also then notice a central building um which was quite clearly once an elvish castle of sorts um and you get the impression from what the uh, from what master alaric told you that this was probably the the ancient throne or the old throne of Morse Tacy, but is now where the governance rests in the hands of the Council of Elders. As you traverse the city then, your gaze is drawn occasionally back to this old castle that once stood as the seat of power, now more of a symbolic space you recognise that that is quite clearly where the the abode of the Council of Elders is, where the decisions are made and the, the path of the city's future is charted. But that enchanting harmony of artistry, of nature, of tradition, this symphony of elven heritage, if you like, thrives within this evergreen sanctuary of this ancient woodland. Jewel, this ancient woodland feels 
very familiar. There is part of this that just brings back those memories of home. But Lex, even you now feel this, just being here, this connection to the heart of elven history that is preserved in this enduring embrace of a city. Where would we like to go? Jewel, I should come to you first and say, because you do feel that recognition, how else is Jewel feeling? Yeah, so I was going to say that Lex, you... Lex would definitely see that, you know, Jewel suddenly looks just way more relaxed, like, uh, not necessarily, like, smiley and happy, but definitely much more at ease. Um, and standing a little straighter, she's even taking her hood off. She's very much feeling more at home. This feels, yeah, you, you just get that, that, that experience. I take it that it is only of, is it only elves or is it predominantly elves here? Ask me that <laughs> question again. Are there, is it just elves or predominantly, as in just the vast majority is elves? Make me a, sorry, I'm quickly scanning through all my notes here because I know <laughs> the answer, but it's whether, yeah, make me, make me a perception check, please. Yeah. <clears throat> I was totally distracted by my phone then for a minute, so forgive me for missing the question. That's okay, 18. Don't check your phone in the middle of the session. Yeah. Um, with an 18, it is primarily elves, but there are moments where you do catch the ears of non-elven creature, non creatures, but still very much intertwined. So there is a lot of elves and half-elves around here. But when I say half-elves, I'm not just talking about humans and elves. I'm talking about other races and elves as well. There is what looks oh. like a, a half-elf, half-ogre, and a, a small family of these individuals as well. Um, there is um, orcish her hereditary in here as well. You don't necessarily see any other clear races on their own, but what you do get is this infusion of other races with elvish, elvish heritage as well. So the majority of people here are elvish or half-elvish. You do see a number of tabaxi <laughs> as well. And yes, there will be half-gnome, half-elves half as well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very important question, JK. Which poses a strange dichotomy because you've got these, they're almost halfling size, half elves if you like, but gnomish pinched features if you like, quite large nose, but long flowing hair and this <laughs> grace and beauty that f sort of shines through from from the elves as well. We all have a gnome. A sense of, a sense of grace and vulgarity at the same time. And my camera's pissed. Absolutely. What's he doing? <laughs> 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 oh, oh, look, I've gone cross-eyed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, that's definitely what you should see with, uh, with Jewel. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. Probably, yeah, just just walking around and having having much more of a look, and yeah, just, just much more at home. And the people around here do sort of greet you, and there's a an almost welcoming nature to the city. Um, people sort of bow their heads towards you. There are the occasional glances towards Lex, but Lex, you being the humanoid version of UNT there's not too much of a too much of an intrigue there they are used to I'll call it what it is they're used to half breeds and um 
infusions of cultures here. That's a definition of Lex. Definitely an infusion of cultures. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, Jewel is probably the most purebred person there at the moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. As I say, there are a few other tabaxi dotted around. Um, as you would know, Jewel, there are a number of tabaxi drives throughout Drymer. Yeah. Um, seeing how relaxed you are, I kind of now feel more relaxed when I'm picking up on your vibe. And uh, gee, the Archmage says that building is probably the place to go if we want to find the Elder. Yes, I, I, I believe so. I, um, I think it is best we simply go and ask uh, if we can uh, ask them any questions it it is probably their um, uh, the place of sitting for their council so it may not be as easy as just, we're just walking in and asking for uh, for council but uh, we can try uh, at the very least we simply need to go in and see what is what um, yeah, at least ask for an audience. Yes. Them, as for the audience, yeah. I, I, I hope that uh, even if we have to stay uh, um, a few hours to wait, then this is fine. What do we need? A, do we need a cover story or a, a ruse? Because if we say we're looking for an elf who's potentially a murderer, they might they might get them defensive. We might simply start with the fact that we have that uh, scroll that was given to you only uh, uh, an hour or so ago, when, before we left, and we simply say that we are uh, looking for information and we are working with the... Um, it is not the Crystalline Isle, it is uh, whatever is in the Crystalline Isle. We are working yeah, with them. Yeah, we, we could say um, we're investigating a murder and they are a potential key witness to help us with the case. So not even say that they're a suspect. Absolutely, I would say. But f first step is simply say, you know, where we have come from, what we are, uh, you know, uh, who, are, yeah. who we are working with, and we would simply like an audience. Uh, and then, yes, when we are actually in there, definitely, uh, we, we, um, we mentioned that they the, are a key witness. After all, you know this place. after all, we, we we must not make us direct assumptions at the moment. We have jumped ahead in our assumptions. We have to admit. Yeah, true, 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 true. But so, I think it's a pretty. I mean, oh, well, I, 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 I think it is a very mm. high uh, percentage uh, chance that uh, they are them, but uh, we cannot say that for sure. Do you think, um, well, well, from what you know of this place from, from your youth, is, is there going to be like bounty hunters here? If we reveal our location, do you think it'll put us at risk, is what I'm saying, if we reveal who we are? There will be outsiders just like us. So we do have to be careful. However, we are a fair distance, and uh, we have travelled by magical means twice now. So uh, and we have certainly not left a trail. So yeah, I, I, there is always a chance. I hope, however, I have seen the odd tapaxi around. We may get uh, a, a better welcome than. Well, some bounty hunter. What I am trying to say is, the difference between here and a here and a Gruz is, we are slightly better off. Okay. Well, I'll follow your lead. As your own. I will say, Jewel, that as you turf. look around. Sorry, Lex, to cut over there. As you look around and see the other Tapaxi, and they see you, they do give you the the common formal tabaxi greeting which you would know translates to i see you which is sort of a stroke of the eyes down to the chin and then hand forward a jewel will repeat it back to each one that she sees and again just feels like home Sorry, Lex, you were saying something now and I cut straight over. Um, I was just saying I'll, I'll follow Jules' lead in terms of how to present myself here and act as she's on somewhat of home turf. It is a, You'll uh, see Jules is very relaxed here, but yeah. It is a point of, uh, of note, Lex. As you can see, these uh, elves are 
they're very much uh, in keeping with the nature. The elves I was with was, if you can believe it, even more so. Um, this is quite the the city, um, uh, built very much for civilization, and the elves I knew were very in keeping with nature. So this is very homely, but also one degree in uh, slightly foreign. But I am sure that uh, the elvish c cultures is not that dissimilar. Distracted by chat. <laughs> Brilliant. Funnel <laughs> Which translates to what a fuck. And that's how names <laughs> to do selves. Uh, the birds and the bees. Gnomish Valentines. You've, you've got a, a, a job in Gnomish Valentines, they can't. That is for sure. <laughs> Nobody do some AI generated Fantastic. art of that card, please. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Excellent. so, um, so Jewel, Jewel, Jewel is going yeah straight straight for that uh, for that castle, uh, looking for main entrance and where they might find entry with the rest of the public. Right. <clears throat> cool. So you do sort of weave in and out of these, um, what almost feel like natural streets. Like there's no clear um, structure to these streets and pathways it's almost like they were just they've gone with the the natural pathways of the woodland there are some areas that have, have been cleared to make way for buildings but generally the streets feel very natural and almost like woodland paths um and eventually you get towards the this castle which is situated next to this giant ancient tree um, the trunk of which is just massive. Um, and you can see there are people sort of to and fro from the, from the, the council building. Um, and you see a number of very impressive looking individuals, um, stood outside the council building that seem to embody the elegance and strength of, of elven people. They wear finely crafted armor um that almost expertly blends the idea of aesthetics and practicality um it looks like it is this combination of leather and metal work uh, or metal plates so somebody would quite clearly be able to maintain the agility they require but also have some form of protection you can quite clearly see the the intricate elven patterns and symbols that would indicate their allegiance to the city and all of these guards are graceful um, with lithe athletic builds um, you see pointed ears of elves that hallmark of elven heritage that protrude out of the the hair hair which is a mixture of gold silver auburn the eyes of these individuals reflecting the colours of nature, greens, blues, golds again. They appear both enchanting but also very commanding and as they move, any movements they make are very fluid and very precise. Um, now some of these guards, which you can quite clearly denote that these are guards, some accentuate in their armour their connection to either the forest or the sea. So some adorn themselves with natural accessories, leaf-shaped pendants or shells from, from coastlines. You also see that some of them have intricate tattoos or subtle tattoos actually and, and face paints that may hold some sort of cultural significance. Um, but there is a definite pride. You see a number of individuals actually off to the side training and it is very rigorous, it's extensive. You can see that they are well versed in multiple different combat techniques um, and all the while they hold this air of nobility and grace and the individuals you see in this 
outside this council chamber they are ever vigilant their eyes are constantly looking and you know that these individuals are always ready to defend this council chamber in this city should the need arise so as you approach they sort of look at you with a questioning look to begin with but then two of them bow so Jewel would respond with with, <clears throat> with with a with a known greeting um, that she would know with you know oh. with the elves. They return Think. it. <clears throat> Not so much an outsider then. Returning and nearby. Thank you for your welcome. We are hoping to uh, most welcome to speak to uh, a member of the council, if this is uh, possible and agreeable. The council are hearing individuals today, so you are in luck. You have a good day. Did you need to speak to one individual in particular, or all? We have been given a, a, a vague. Uh, description um, one of the uh, the elder females we do Who not has given you this uh, description we have recently uh, <coughs> traveled from oh, bloody hell, what the hell is it called <clears throat> this year, pillar. This year, Thank you. pillar pillar mm-hmm. pillar fuck we have traveled from the azure <laughs> pillar <laughs> Uh, I helped a little bit. <laughs> and uh, spoken with uh, Master Alaric. We believe they have uh, occasional trade with you. Mm, Master Alaric usually sends some form of uh, a written letter. Ah, uh, Lex, to, uh, please, the letter. Ah, yeah, um, there, there you go. I hope this will uh, suffice. This seems important. Uh, Please do bear with me. And this female elf sort of dances into the council chambers. Um, And about ten minutes later you see a couple of individuals sort of not hurried out but are being gently encouraged out of the door and there's a slightly disgruntled look on their face um, as the female elven guard sort of approaches you. The council will see you now. Thank you. You're most welcome. <clears throat> welcome to Moss Tasty. It is a pleasure to be here. Uh, Le- Lex, please uh, follow me. I will enter. You enter, and um, this castle as it once was is clearly not in the same state it used to be when it was a a seat of power more so than it is now a lot of the walls have been stripped away to form just this central chamber now which is quite clearly a listening chamber and you do see a um a series of five seats not thrones but just more um ornate chairs in which five individuals are sat in the middle is an individual who is quite clearly the eldest and most revered Um, a female elven figure embodies this idea of grace and wisdom that only the the passage of centuries can can bestow she has long silver hair that cascades down her back looks almost like a waterfall of moonbeams um but all the while and the way she sits there's just this air of defined elegance any movements she makes are as smooth and seamless as leaves in the wind um she wears robes of deep forest green they are intricate uh, adorned with these intricate patterns of leaves and vines um and she has this circlet of woven silver on her brow 
Um, again, another symbol of her status as a high-ranking elder. The furthest left, you see um, an individual who is quite clearly a half-elf. Um, looks more half-elf human. Um, very much embodies that merging of two worlds. So there's the graceful features of an elf, but that rugged strength of a human male. Um, again, they've got long silver hair, but this time it's tied back in a very practical braid. Um, and their bright eyes seem to sparkle with curiosity, wisdom. Um, he too wears robes of sort of greens, if you like. The next one in is a slightly different there's definitely a shortness to this individual and you get the impression that this is a melding of elven and dwarvish lineage female individual so again there's this resilience but also this grace there's copper hair that just spills down this individual's back like molten metal and she has deep emerald eyes that's that have got a depth to them almost like an ancient mine um very much a sturdy frame, but the practicality to the clothes they wear just reflect that dwarven heritage. Um, she carries a hammer at her waist, indicating that she may be a, a craftswoman of sorts. Um, yeah. The other side of this older female, then, the first one, is a another elven figure um, again radiates just ethereal beauty ethereal wisdom um, flowing silver hair again seems to just shimmer um, almost like moonlight her eyes have this starlight quality to them as well she has a a pendant of a, a moon hung around her neck um, and there's a gentle and compassionate nature to this individual um, and you instantly feel calm just by being in front of this individual and the final one um, is a a male half elf but half dwarf half elf um, he seems quite full of... No, I don't want to say full of life. Full of fortitude is the way I'm going to say it. So there's a strength to them, but also a, you, you can see they are very agile. So there's this rugged build. They've got keen eyes that reflect that wisdom of the elves. Um, but there is a scent, there's a commanding presence here. Um, you see a sword at his waist indicating that he clearly has something to do with defense or is a warrior of sorts um and yeah he wears sort of these robes of orangey red almost like fallen leaves um mixed with sort of blacks and blues if you like very dark navy blue just underneath the black clashing in some ways and as you step forward, this the central female individual just sort of lifts her head. Welcome to Moss Tessy, Jules of Shadows, and Lex Odo. You are most welcome here. Can Jules make a perception or insight check as to whether anyone actually recognises either of us? Yes, you can. <clears throat> uh, ooh, which one am I doing? Insight or perception? That's a question. Insight, please. <laughs> 21. Nobody recognises you. They've clearly gotten your names from whatever was written in the letter. Yeah. <clears throat> Council of uh, Morse Daisy. Thank you for... Uh, meeting us so um, promptly 
We did not expect such um well <laughs> such an entrance. Thank you. We have um been on quite a journey, both uh Lex and myself. Um those journeys have joined recently in Thalissa. We are looking for as much information as we can on a female is it a female elf? I believe it is. Yep. A female elf named once named Mayanora. And we are trying to find more information about this person. They um we have uh As Sorry, yeah, I mean, Sorry. Lex, Lex, Lex I, can jump in. I was just going to say, because there's three females, and we were told to look out for a female. Can I scan their faces to see if there was any recognition on them when Jules said Mayanora? Make me an insight check, please. Seventeen. Nice. There is a glance amongst all five individuals here. And then passes very quickly as the the name Mayanora is spoken. They are uh, a person of interest in the unfortunate and uh, time untimely demise of uh, Artemisia, who was um, part of, I believe, um, the Azure Pillar. But as we knew, uh, the senior ar arcanist of the Alentha Lyceum. We are hoping to find as much information of this person to find out what they know of the demise of the Arcanist. The name Mayanora is well known amongst Dryamir. It is a name we do not wish to speak of quite openly. Oh. We got the initiated Well, you say she has murdered someone. She is, is a person of interest in the murder. Yeah, potentially a key well, witness. A key witness. Oh, maybe not the man or we know then. Oh, well. Is it a common name? It is, uh... Not as common anymore. If you jump to the conclusion of that she uh, murdered the arcanist, then it is likely we are searching for this individual. Like we say, we do not want to make overshadowing conclusions that are going to uh, uh, put our investigation into the wrong path. However, we cannot deny it is heading that way anyway. And this central individual was just going to look to her peers for a conversation like this. I think we will need wine and perhaps some food. It has been a long morning already for my colleagues and I. Let us first introduce ourselves. I am Leora Windwhisper. This individual to my far left is Tharion Storm Song. The Lady Half Elf, also to my left. It's Glim Silvervane. And you see Glim, who is the, the female half elf, half dwarf, who just sort of bows her head and the copper hair just spills over her shoulders and again looks like almost just molten ore pouring around her shoulders. To my right, is Silara Moonglade, the other elven female here. And on the end is Dragon Ironheart. And Dragon is the only one to speak you know, as they bow their head. And this strange accent comes out, which is just very robust. Welcome to Mostacy. 
you bring grave news. We will discuss over food. This sounds ideal. Thank you. Thank you for your hospitality. What did you say the main Even lady's down. name was? Did she introduced herself. Your wind whisper. And there was say Celara. So there was Leora Wind Whisper, yep. Farian Storm Song, Glim Silver Vein, yep. Silara or Silara, Silara Moonglade. Moonglade, that's it. Oh, Glade, not Glade. Dragon or Dragon Ironheart, D R A G A N. D R A G A N, yeah. We don't actually know uh, Maynard's last name, do we? Nope. Yeah. Did, didn't we assume, well, if her uncle is... Nope, is you're mixing your lore again. Yeah, we got, we got Janus, we got, we've got got we got Janus and Vane, um, but again... Janus and VS are uncle and nephew, are they? Can't remember, was it VS or V... Uh, yeah. I don't know whether it was VS. Un uncle and niece. Yeah. There we go. Which I don't but know I mean, if you you've not discovered that or rediscovered, excuse me, rediscovered that in game yet. I don't think. Uh, I think we talked about it because I basically just I, I literally just read out what my notes were, which would be uh, yeah. what Jules were. The uncle to Jane is there. what I'll I mean. I'll have to go and listen back, but yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so no, you do not know what Mayanora's last name is. Oh, M you simply no, know M's that from the notebook. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you just remember the the initial M. Yeah. Cool. Um, so they, uh, the, sorry, Leora then turned to. We will uh, break council for now. Um, hopefully, some others will uh, wait till another day. We have more important matters, it seems. Uh, if you please wait in the. Uh, well, if I wait here, we will be back momentarily with. Uh, well, we'll have some people bring a table and we can sit and chat over a meal. Always easy to uh, discuss harder things when we are full of belly and, uh, well, less inhibited. I look forward to it. Just before you leave, I want to know, before we get into this conversation, you have not had any... Uh, Issues or rumours of shadows or people having bad dreams? Uh, there is a, a fluctuation in Leora's sort of calm demeanour before she just turns... Uh, no, no, I'm afraid we haven't. Can I insight check the fuck out of that? Then, <laughs> Absolutely can. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute balls, it's a nine. You still see what is quite clearly a, a mask, a slip of the mask as well. Then I think our conversation will be quite important to you as well. Okay, we will be back uh, moment, momentarily. I'm very good. Um, I've done that deliberately. I would love to carry on <laughs> and have this discussion, but we are over three hours in. Um, oh, and I'm well, aware we've all got busy days. So so. If, it did, if it didn't have work, these would go on for hours. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we will call that for tonight a uh, bit of everything again a little bit of law a little bit of combat just to get everybody back into the swing of things and warmed up again um we will be back next week for episode 27 there are some schedule updates to come so we're gonna have to take the last two weeks of august off just because of holidays um i'm sure you forgive us for that we all need to spend time with our friends and family and loved ones um but we will be back with hopefully some guest stars in early September 
as well so look out for that i will update the the schedule on our discord server so if you're not on there please come and join us you can get all the details of the discord server on our website modelmagic.co.uk or you can find out all the information on social media and stuff like that um but yes this has been episode 26 that has been that thank you all for joining us we love you always uh please stay safe um please interact with us come join us um and we will see you next week